Hey guys, we're going to talk about every energy problem ever. I mean, approximately. So that's a slightly ambitious title, I know, but I'm going to try to give you here the basic idea of how you set up, uh, let's say, almost every energy problem you're likely to run into, at least during this unit. Okay, so here's your basic program for every single energy problem. Step one is you have to decide whether it's going to be delta E equals zero or delta E equals work. To decide whether or not there is work, you look at usually whether or not there is friction. Every now and then there will be something like an applied force, like some guy is pushing. But I haven't done those kinds of questions on a test in a while. Okay, so, but fine. In theory, for some other occasion, there could be an applied force such as somebody dragging something up an incline or sliding it across the floor, all right? Step two, you have to decide what kinds of energy are present at each of the two moments or positions, however you want to think about that, uh, in order to decide um, uh, whatever you're trying to work out, okay? So you have to list out the things that are present at each of those positions. If it helps, you can write out this, write out the three kinds that we've learned about, and then cross off the ones that aren't present. All right, there we go. And then if there is friction, as we referenced up here, then you're going to have to put in something for work, which if it's friction is always going to be negative FD, because work is force times distance, but friction is always going to do negative work. And if you don't write that negative sign in, no one's going to write it for you, and you will get the wrong answer because you'll be saying friction helped things go further or faster or some other bogus thing like that. Okay, so you have to put in that negative sign all by yourself. If we're on an inclined plane, the friction force will be mu mg cosine theta, which means that the work done by friction would be negative mu mg cosine theta d. If you leave out the d, it's not a work. It's just the force of friction. Okay, so you better have a d in there. All right, and then if you're on a flat surface, then the friction force is just going to be mu mg, which makes the work in that case be negative mu mg d. All right, and then finally, we got a plug in and then solve for whatever we're supposed to solve for. Uh, more or less, if you know, you've know you got a question that's run two ways, where it's like, do this without friction. Oh, just kidding, now do it with friction. Your analysis here doesn't change. Literally the only difference is what's going to go on on the right side of the equation with work versus zero, and that's a theme that you're going to see repeated as we go through a couple of example problems. Okay, so this is the scheme that you go through every time you do an energy problem. Now what we got to do is look at a bunch of different sort of examples. And all I'm going to do with these is set them up. Uh, and I'll periodically pause to let you sort of work it out on your own. All right, and then you resume. Okay, so I'll skip all the writing out and just be like, okay, now pause the video and then suddenly, boom, the uh, quote, answers will appear. They're not really going to be answers. It's just going to be the setup because that's really what I'm interested in is can you set it up? After that, it's nitty gritty, plugging in numbers, doing algebra, all that kind of stuff, which is entirely up to you. Okay, I cannot help you with that part, but I can help you with the physics. All right, so let's see if I can find those examples. Oh, no, that's not it. No. Nope, hang on. Somewhere around here. Uh... All right, there we go. We're going to start with inclined plane. So remember, the format here is you're going to pause, try to figure it out on your own, following those steps I mentioned moments ago, and see what you can get from it. All right, so first case is an object is sliding up an incline, and you are supposed to find the distance that it travels. Usually the way this would be done is with friction, or sorry, without friction first, and then with friction. Often the way it's done, uh, the way that it's done is actually supposed to 
be in order to let you know whether or not you've screwed up. Because obviously if you get without friction, it slides five meters. With friction, it had better be less than that. Okay, so let's see if you can follow that format. All right, do first uh, without friction, right? Delta E equals zero. Figure out the initial energy and the final energy, and then set it up. All right, and then also do with friction once you feel like you've got that under control. All right, so pause the video, figure it out. So there it is, without friction. I don't know if you can see what I crossed off here, but uh, elastic potential energy is obviously crossed off in every case if there aren't any springs. So I'm just going to go ahead and cross it off from all of these problems, because all the ones I've got on the board right now, there's no springs involved. All right, final energy was gravitational potential energy. Initial was kinetic. So the work. Okay. All right, and uh, so ponder that as long as you like. I'm going to pause again and now change it up for what if there is friction. And there it is with friction. Uh, I've done a little bit of extra algebra to work out what the distance is in this case since it's a little more complex when... The D appears in two places, but notice really the only thing that changed about our basic setup here was instead of zero, I had work. All of my analysis about the final and initial energy was still accurate, right? Uh, the final energy is gravitational potential energy. The initial energy was kinetic energy, but the amount of energy would be different at those two positions due to the work being done by friction. Okay, time to look at the next one, which is where we have an object sliding down. And this is going to look very familiar since we already did an object sliding up. Okay, so see if you can set that one up, or maybe you don't need to and you can just watch. Okay, there it is without friction sliding down. It's really just the sliding up problem backwards because the initial energy and the final energy are switched. So that's all. You didn't really need to do a whole lot different. We're making all of the same substitutions. All right, so now let's see what it looks like with friction. Oh, that didn't pause. There it is. No, it's the only difference. All right. Um, so to find, if you had numbers, you can go ahead and plug in or whatever, right? If you're solving for V, super straightforward. Um, notice a common feature with these questions where there's no spring involved and where you only have one object, the mass is actually always going to cancel. All right, if you've got two objects uh, or and or you have a spring involved, then the mass will actually never cancel. So cancels here, that means I don't actually even have to tell you the mass, and if I do, it's kind of unimportant. Um, all right, so fine, there it is. Or at least it's unimportant if you're trying to find the, uh, the speed. We'll in fact cancel. All right, now let's uh, try it where it's flying up off the top of the ramp. Oh, what's going to be different here? All right, so try and set that one up. There it is. Final energy would include two things. It's still moving if it goes flying off the top of the ramp. And of course it went up, so it has gravitational potential energy as well at the end of the problem. So we would have two kinds of energy. All right, and then for the initial, it was of course in this case anyway, all kinetic energy. Um, I left the right side blank because I'm kind of like, at this point you should get the idea about whether it's with or without friction, right? So without would have zero. If it was with friction, then it would be this same expression that we got up there, right? The negative mu mg cosine theta d. Okay, so there we are. The only real difference is, in this case, it's still moving when it reaches the top, whereas in both of these cases, it uh, start, either started from rest or reached a maximum height because it stopped there. All right, let's see if we can set up this last one where it starts at the top of an incline, slides down, and then keeps going for some distance. This one's going to ask for a couple of things, like how fast is it moving when it reaches the bottom, 
which actually you've done one like that already earlier up here, so that's review. But then also, how far will it go before it finally comes to rest at position B, wherever that is? All right, so let's see if we can set up that. So getting the speed at A actually is uh, entirely identical to what we did up here with the sliding down the incline problem. Okay, so really didn't do anything different. It was just set that up again. All right, now if we want to know how far it slides, that one's going to work out to be a little bit different from anything that we've done here so far. All right, so let me pause and you set that up again. There's that final part set up. Um, I looked at the final energy being position B, and I took for this question my initial energy as being the energy at position A, rather than going all the way back to the start. The reason I did that uh, is that if we went all the way back to the start, we would have real trouble calculating the work done by friction because it would involve both this distance and this distance. And the force of friction changes when we're looking at the two parts of the problem, right? It, when it's on a slope, it's mu mg cosine theta is your force of friction. But when you're on a flat surface, it's mu mg. Okay, so therefore, rather than worry about two different friction forces over two different distances, I started at A for my initial position and looked at B as my final. The energy at B is nothing. It's not moving, it didn't go up a hill, and didn't hit a spring. So, zero. And so, that's what you can see set up over here. All right. Now, let's uh, move from here to some questions with springs. Let's take a look at springs. All right, now, first thing with springs, I got to get some vocabulary out of the way before we start looking at any of the actual examples. First thing is, if they say something about a mass being hung from a spring, or maybe placed on top of, right, you can have that as well, where it's like, here's the floor, here's the spring. All right, and it, you know, it just sits on it and compresses it, you know, a certain amount, right? Okay, fine. Um, that's a question of equilibrium, meaning you're not using one half kx squared. You're using the weight, not mgh, and kx, the spring force, okay? So if it just says hung or placed or, you know, anything that indicates that it's not being like, dropped or fired or something like that, then it's probably forces. You don't get the same answers if you try to use energy, okay? Forces and energy work differently and you will get different answers, okay? So beware of that. On the other hand, it says that the spring uh, or the, the mass is dropped onto the spring or uh, a mass with a spring attached to it is dropped well, that's an energy question, right? It's, there's going to be motion there, right? So clearly, that's energy. You have to do a careful accounting of the energy, though, if there is any kind of vertical motion with the spring. So, you know, if you drop something onto a spring or the spring fires something upwards, often it's a little bit tricky to, you know, take care of all of the different kinds of energies present, right? Uh, in your lab, for example, right, we had a mass on a spring and we dropped it and we looked at the energy present at each of the various positions. Well, here, if you were lucky, you had an extension of zero, right, from the initial position. Maybe not, okay? Uh, but if that was the case, well, then it would just have gravitational potential energy because it's motionless at the top. All right, and then the unit might have some elastic potential energy, maybe. Okay, but not in this case if x equals zero. At the equilibrium position, it's not at the bottom yet, right? So it might still have some gravitational potential energy, um, and it's definitely moving, so it's got kinetic, and the spring is more stretched, so it has elastic potential energy. At the very bottom, it only has elastic potential energy. 
All right, and then be careful about these two things. Looks like I'm going to break to another video about all the rest of the questions, but please be careful about this.